morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is our we have been speaking uh, during this uh, part of the year about the early church and what's been happening after the resurrection of Jesus and after Pentecost. And last week we talked about the persecutions that were going on and how the apostles ended up going to all different places and spread the, the teachings of Jesus in all different parts of the world. They did such a good job that it spread all the way over to us even. And we're Christians today because of the work that the early Christians did, the early apostles. And I wanted to mention today one specific apostle, the apostle John, his icon is in the back over there in the circle, and he's holding a gospel book. He's the older man with the white hair. He's the oldest of all the apostles. He lived the longest of all the apostles. In fact, he lived, he's the only one of the apostles that wasn't killed. All the rest of them were killed because they were teaching others about Jesus. And it was at a time when uh, people really didn't want to hear the message. And oftentimes, if you were a Christian or teaching about Christianity, you could be arrested, you could be put in prison, or even worse, you could be killed. And so during that time, all the apostles knew about this possibility. But they wanted to teach the message of Jesus because... When they taught about Jesus, it filled them with life. And there was nothing greater than that. And they really weren't afraid of death because they knew they had life with Jesus. But John, a little different situation, he was arrested, but for some reason he wasn't killed. But the emperor at the time, who didn't like John because he didn't like that he was a Christian, he decided to exile him to an island. What does exile mean? Good question. Exile means to take someone, to put them in another place, and they can't come back home again. They call that exile. So, so they took John, they put him on this island. So the island was almost like kind of like a prison almost for him because he couldn't, he wasn't allowed to leave. They didn't want him to cause trouble, so they put him on Patmos, this island. And so John lived there on this island, and he lived till he was an old man, and he died eventually on the island of Patmos. Yes, he had food. He had food, he had a place to sleep. You can actually visit the island of Patmos today and see where he lived. It's near Turkey today. And, um, and while he was on Patmos, and, and John, he wrote the gospel according to John, okay? He wrote, he's one of the 12 apostles, he wrote the gospel according to John. He also wrote three letters that we have in the Bible. And so we call the gospel according to John, John. That's what we usually call that book in the Bible, John. When we say John chapter three, we're talking about the gospel according to John that he wrote. Then there's three letters. We call these three letters, first the John, second John, and who knows what the third letter is called? Third John, that's right. First John, second John, and third John. And sometimes when you read it, if you see it written, it'll just say the number three, then John. So the Gospel of John, chapter three, would be written John three, then a verse, let's say, 
or 16 or something. And then, but with the letters, it's one John, two John, or three John. And they're much shorter. They're, they're actually very, very tiny. They're short letters. So John wrote the gospel, and he wrote first, second, and third John. And he also wrote another book called the Book of Revelation. It's the last book in the Bible. Okay, the Book of Revelation. It's the last book of the New Testament. And um, it's interesting, this book, and I wanted to mention a little bit about it today for you guys. And John says uh, at the beginning that he's on the island of Patmos. So he's, tell, he's telling us where he is. He was exiled there by the emperor. And he said one day he had a vision. So, and, and then the book of Revelation, this whole book, one of the books, the last book of the Bible, this book is basically him writing down what he saw in his vision. A vision is kind of like a dream. Do you ever have dreams? Who here has dreams? Do sometimes strange things happen in your dreams? Who's ever had a strange thing happen in your dream? I've, I've had some strange things happen in my dream. Well, there's some strange things that happen in the book of Revelation, okay? And, and it's a dream that John had. It's a vision that he had. These things weren't really happening when he saw them happening. It was almost like, it was almost like he was seeing a movie in front of him. And after it all, he wrote it down. Okay, he describes all the different things he saw. One of the interesting things about the book of Revelation is it teaches us that even though awful things happen in the world, that ultimately goodness will happen. And ultimately heaven will be a beautiful place. And that all of us are called to be there with God in heaven someday. And in his vision, he had this picture of what heaven was going to be like. And it's interesting, if you read the whole book of Revelation, you'll see that a lot of the things we do in church, in the liturgy, with the incense, the way we sing, the icons all around us, the Lord's icon above us, the altar that's behind me. When you read the book of Revelation, you see this description of heaven, and you'll also see that it reminds you of a liturgy on Sunday. So it's very beautiful. We've patterned our liturgy after a lot of the things in the book of Revelation, because John wanted to give a picture of heaven, and we want our worship to be like heaven. And this is one of the things John said. This is John chapter, this is Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Have you ever had tears in your eyes? Have you ever been sad about something? In heaven, every tear will be taken away because we won't have that sadness. Death will be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. If you listen to the worship in the church, if you go to a funeral or a memorial service, we even say this very thing, where there is neither sickness, nor sadness, nor sorrow, but life everlasting. 
It's coming right from the book of Revelation. And he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. So John, he wrote it down. So this is a little bit, I wanted to mention this book of Revelation, mention the Apostle John, mention how there's a description of heaven and the victory of God over any evil. It's sad when we see evil in the world. It makes me sad, and it even brings tears to my eyes. And we have to do the best we can to bring peace and love in the world that sometimes people in the world aren't so focused on peace and love. We have to do our job by being good examples of being what a Christian is to help bring peace and love in the world. But beyond that, it's important to know that God will eventually bring healing to all things, to all these difficult things that we see. It's important to know that. And we thank John the Apostle, John the Evangelist, sometimes he's called John the Divine. Uh, we thank him for this book, the book of Revelation, where he describes heaven for us, this beautiful image that helps us with our divine liturgy but also wrote the beautiful gospel and the letters that we have in the Bible by him. Let's stand up and we'll pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh Lord, I thank you for gracing us with your love and peace. Watch over these, your children, Help us all to be instruments of your love and peace in this world. Help us to share your love with others. We pray, Lord, that your love may spread to around the globe so that people will see the purpose for which you have called us, to care for each other, to love each other, and to support each other. We give you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the age of ages. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Yes. Yes.